Hi folks, co-tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. When it comes to background processing in Android, we can mainly talk it in terms of four quadrants. That is whether you want something to be always executed. That is, do you want a guaranteed execution or it is not so much important to you as long as the system tries its best to execute it. Other axis would be something like you want it to be executed at exact particular moment in time that is probably every day at around 10 o'clock or every day at around 12 o'clock if that is what you are looking for the exact opposite of that is you want your tasks to be deferable that is if possible let's execute but otherwise you are not so much strict on the timing at which you are background task you want it to be executed so based on these things we can say that foreground services basically come into the first quadrant that is you can execute them at exact moment in time and they are always guaranteed to get executed in the second quadrant typically the thread pool coroutines that is kotlin coroutines and rx java those things come into picture you can control the exact time at which you want to execute but not in a very guaranteed execution manner it will try its best then in the third quadrant comes thread pool coroutines rx java once again you can use still the same things to get the best effort and the deferable type of behavior then comes the fourth quadrant where job scheduler job dispatcher alarm manager broadcast receiver and even work manager come into a category where whatever the task that you want to execute if you want it to be guaranteed of its execution but not at a very strict timeline these things come under that category. So if you still have a confusion on how you want to run your task in a background, then this particular decision tree can really help you. That is, you want something that is deferable and you want it to run locally on the machine. There is no any external dependency and you want to kind of do a sync kind of work, then you can use work manager. If the answer to this particular question is no, and the next question is, is this something that needs to be triggered from the background? That is, is it online triggered? Then you can use Firebase cloud messaging and work manager. And once again, if that is not the real thing, you are basically expecting the task to run immediately without any interruption, then you have to use foreground services. But once again, if that is not what you are expecting, you want to execute at exact time, then alarm manager is the solution. But if answer to all of these is no then probably don't do that task as a background task you have to do it when the application is running other than this there might still be some frequently asked questions about work manager or some of these apis that we have gone through so let me try to answer them you might be wondering what is the difference between a core routine and a work manager the core routine works only when the app is running work manager gets executed when a particular criteria gets met for example wi-fi is available core routine is not like that your core routine only works only when your application is running the device won't be woken up and it will not run a core routine that is the difference between a core routine and a work manager or a worker the next question you might be having is can we create a custom constraint to a work manager for example when I say constraint, you want to execute a particular worker only if the cellular network is available or a Wi-Fi network is available. So these are the constraints. Now you want to create your own custom constraint. Can you create a custom constraint to trigger a worker using the work manager? Well, as of now, that facility is not yet available in the latest library. But who knows, probably it will come in the future. Next question is, can we restart a failed worker? Well, no, but you can use retry methodology that is already available in the worker. If you recall, the do work method returns a result and it could be result.success or result.failure and there is another third option called as result.retry which basically tells the worker manager to retry if something goes wrong 
so you can use that but you can't restart the next question might be in the mvvm architecture that typically we follow in an android application where does work manager fits in well the answer is you can use it with a view model and then what happens to the worker when the app gets killed well there are two ways to look at it that is when the app gets killed if your worker was running then it will get resumed later whenever a particular criteria is met the other possibility is your worker might not have been running when the app gets killed in that case job scheduler will enqueue it and run it whenever a particular condition is met you need not have to worry about it now the next question is can we work chain dynamically that is uh, we saw in the work chaining video that you can basically set a dependency of the workers the order in which you want to execute them well can you decide the order of these workers at the runtime the answer is yes you can do that there is a method called as append which allows you to do exactly this then probably last question does device reboot affect the work manager execution and the answer is no they are not affected if your device gets switched off and then it gets switched on then the work manager will resume whatever the worker that was supposed to run if a particular criteria was met so with this i conclude the discussion about the background processing in android i shall meet you in the next video with another topic that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye